Hello beautiful people of the internet, welcome to this Wii map making lesson for the game Cities Skylines 2, courtesy of me, Ancient Swan, because I'm the one who made it. I know because I was there when I was doing it, and that's what my name is. Ancient Swan, I remember, and I could not be shorter for time if I tried. So we are going to dive right in. How do we get a height map? Step one, go get your height map. There are two main links for doing this. Links on screen and in the description below. Number one is terraining, and when you go there, it looks like this. Are you looking? This is terraining. It's awesome, isn't it? It is genuine magic and is a wonder of the modern world. Terraining is the easiest of your two options, so we'll do this first. For my map lesson, I'll be doing Trowulan, Indonesia, and on my screen, it looks like this. Your screen will look like something else, though, because that's how maps work. I found what I want to be the center of my city. Now make sure your settings are set to CS2. Mine looks like this, the standard presets. To do this, you'll also first need a map box token. You can go get one very easily at the map box website. So go do that if you haven't done already. Got it? Okay, put it in the box and let's go get the map. Now, up to the top right of the screen, click that Wii. PNG icon and wait. Careful too, at this bit, I've had my Google Chrome just give up and die, so good luck. Did it work? It will be in your downloads folder if so. Okay, now let's cut and paste that to the correct folder. We can find that in the height maps folder. The address is on screen and in the description below. Now let's load the game and into the editor we go. You'll have noticed the website earlier downloaded two height maps. One of them was for the playable game area the other is that bigger world map so load the maps click on the shovel at the bottom then up right to the height map buttons clicking the correct button to load the central game map and the other to load the giant world bish bash bosh job done and for me it looks like this looks good right but wait what is that shit that looks bad maybe if i just smooth the land it'll be fine oh god no that's much worse damn now what do i do i can't use this map Fear not, ladies and gentle ladies, for all is not lost. Terraining actually will do a perfectly fine job most of the time, and most of the time it won't give something as blocky as this. So feel free to use it worry-free most of the time. But it's okay when it fails, because there is another much more complicated other option. Option two, we're going to have to go get QGIS. So go to www.qgis.org. Go get it. Got it? Good. Installed it? No. Well, go bloody do that then. Okay, installed it now. Good. We're not finished yet, though. There's more. I told you, terraining was easier. Just do this anyway, and it'll make your heart happy, okay? Next, let's get Topper Crafter, a Wii mod made by a genius named NML Knight for QGIS, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to use. You think this bit is complicated? Try it without Tulpa Crafter. You'll go mad. It ain't worth it. Trust me. I'm mental crazy and there's nothing I can do about it now other than just ride the wave. Anyway, to Tulpa Crafter, we'll find it at GitHub in the link you see now and in the description below. Go there. Click and download the file. CSK2 Tulpa Crafter underscore V1 beta. Now, you don't know why yet, but you'll want to thank NML Knight more than you can realize. So thank you, NML Knight. And now let's load up QGIS. And it looks like this. Now go up to Plugins and click Manage and Install Plugins. Go to Install with Zip Tab and click the Wii three dots on the right and locate the zip file you just downloaded. Now click Install the plugin. Now back to the main QGIS screen. Go up to the menu bar at the top where it says Project, Edit, View, etc. Find an empty part and right click. This will bring up a panels menu. Now make sure the processing toolbox panel option is selected. The plugin will now appear in the processing toolbox, but we're not done yet. Oh no, there's more. Fortunately, you only need to do all of this once though, so stick with me. Now we're going to go get an API key. Go to opentopography.org and hit request an API key to create an account. Now log in to find your API key. Quick, go, go, go. Okay, got that now too? Good, don't lose it, we'll need it later. Okay, now all the things we've just done, we only have to do that once. From now on, we should never have to repeat these steps to use QGIS. We will, however, have to repeat the next steps. 
and those are how to get your coordinates. We're going to use two websites. You may as well bookmark these because you will be back. All links are on screen and in the description below. Site number one is going to tell us which UTM zone our map is in, so go there and find where you are on our glorious, beautiful little blue ball. Here's mine, Trowulan, East Java, Indonesia. We're in UTM zone 49S. To be honest, that first page isn't always necessary. A lot of the time for the next page, we can just type the name of the country, but also often cannot, and knowing this zone number will help. Okay, next on to page two. Let's get our coordinates and height map download information. Go to it and click change down at the bottom of the screen. Now search for the UTM zone we got earlier. If there's no result, then sometimes putting a space between the 49 and the S will work. Sometimes no space works better. And here we have a list of possible data we can get. I'm going to go with the one meter accuracy map for obvious reasons. Take note of the UPSG code 23879. Click and select now. Go find ourselves on the world again. Here I am back in Indonesia. At the top of the screen, we will see our coordinates. Click copy. OK, now back to QGIS. Click to open Topocrafter. Paste those coordinates into the top box. The comma to separate them won't be included from the website, so be sure to also enter a wee comma between the two pasted coordinates. Otherwise, it won't work. Next enter that UPSG code. For me, it's 23879. Now, your API key from earlier. Get your own code. You don't get to see mine. It's secret. OK, you entered that. Next, choose your DEM source. Personally, I prefer Alos World 3D 30 meter, but you should play around with this to see what you prefer. You do you and all that jazz. Ignore the two checkboxes below. They're buggy and ignore the advanced parameters for now. You can come back and play with these later, too, if you're into torture, whatever floats your boat. Now, the final bit, file name and location, go to the first. This will save our world map. Click the three dots and then save to file. I'm going to name mine a unique name so I can recognize it in game, QGIS Troa World, and click save. Finally, the game map, same again, but change a little, QGIS Troa game, and click save. Now click run, and if all is well, then all will be well, because that's how the universe works. Click and see. Now, there will likely be a pause around 18%, but don't worry, it'll be fine. There is a chance it won't work now and again. It'll just refuse to recognize those coordinates. I don't know how to fix that when it happens, though, so no point in asking. Sometimes life do just be like that. Now, if everything has worked, then we're golden. This app has just gone and put those height maps already into that height maps folder we were in oh so long ago now. You can go check if you like. Here's mine. You'll see the app has put some .dx files in there too. You can delete these. I do because I'm obsessive, compulsive, and weird out of place stuff like this keeps me awake at night. So goodbye, weird little things. Okay, now let's go load the game again, see how it looks. Gord, I hope it's a good one. What if it's a rubbish one and I've gone and typed all this bloody script for nothing? I'll have to back and find another area. Take new screenshots and fix this script. Sorry, this better work. OK, click shovel and import height maps. Et voila, a lovely imported height map, not blocky and looking pretty good. Let's see those mountains. Much better. This game's default textures are woefully low res, in my opinion. But we can fix that with the texture replacing mod if necessary, though I do prefer to keep it as close to real world as possible. Let's see. What does Google Earth show us? How does this part of the world look? What colours are those mountains? Any street view? Good. Street view images are good, or if you're really lucky, you might find a drone shot. And look at this. A beautiful shot taken from the top of that mountain we just saw in game. Thank you, Mr. Echo Scenario, Terra Makasi. Stranger of the internet, we love you. Look at it, it's beautiful. God, I loved Indonesia so much. I used to live there, you know? The people were so nice and hot weather every day. I loved it so much. Hello, Indonesia. How are you? Anyway, as we can see, the earth here is quite a dark brown, so chameleon's texture won't do. Maybe default is best or something like the Mediterranean. Yes, I like that better. Those reds match Echo's picture. We're going to be covering most of this red in trees. Anyway, this part of the world is rainforest, or at least it would be if men didn't keep chopping it down. It is very green, though. We can see in Echo's photo that trees and grassland also climb these mountains all the way to the tops. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our height map in-game. Now, I will add here that there is another option called Gaia, and this third one is actually the one that the game devs use. Why didn't I mention it earlier? Surely, if it's the one the actual devs use, I should have done that one first. Well, 
I haven't mentioned it today though because it ain't free, it's money, and as a highly functioning Scotsman I am bound by both my culture and my DNA to spending as little money as possible, so I do free. And so I've never even used Gaia, but you can find it at quadspinner.com if you want to have a bash. But who needs to spend money when you can get this for free? Look at it. The bare bones are now here and we're ready to start actually making the map. Good, because that's the fun bit. We'll be doing that in lesson number two, which is the one that comes after this one, because this is lesson number one and two comes after one, or at least that's what I've been led to believe. Anyway, that's in the next video. We'll be starting off with rivers, which will be fun because rivers are bloody hard, mostly because of the bloody water, which is a pain in the ass to control. You'll see this map is quite a flat map though, so that will be a lot of help. Maybe I should do another separate rivers map later on, much more challenging terrain, but for the sake of beginning lessons, this will do perfectly. So anyway, thanks for watching. Keep your eyes peeled. If you also need to know the next bit, like subscribe, punch and kick all that jazz and all the other stuff too i'm out like a bean sprout good bye